So we're almost ready for our big moment, sitting down and writing the story, because writing the story is proof of all the hard work, because you found the story, you've found the material, you've spoken to the right people, you've remembered who, what, where, why and when and how. And now we've come to the BBC, who of course will be covering the BNY Mellon boat race on television. We're here to enter the global newsroom, the newsroom which serves the whole world and we're about to write the story and work out how we're going to structure the story and also how to lay it out. Well, if there's one man who knows all about that, it's the man who used to run the sports department at Britain's most popular newspaper, the Sun newspaper, with almost four million people reading every day. It's the man here, Paul Ridley. Paul, how does an aspiring B&Y Mellon young sports reporter grab a reader's attention then, make them want to read the whole article? Jonathan, the key to it is the intro. The first 20 to 25 words of the story is the, is the moment that you capture the reader's attention and deliver, start to deliver, your, your race report, your match report, your big fight report. That's the way it works. Those 20 to 25 words are absolutely essential where you deliver the result and the turning point, the critical moment that turned victory into defeat or defeat into victory. And in terms of the words then, what sort of words, what sort of language should people use? It needs to be fairly emotive, but it needs to be absolutely purely based on those two points, the result and the turning point. Once the reader gets, understands that, remember that they will have watched the fight, they will have watched the race, they will have been at the cricket match, they are going to have their own opinion, but it's your job as the reporter to present to them okay, a fully detailed report of what went on. So you got the intro, how then do you develop it? How does that report flow so that you explain what happened, the key moments, the turning points? Once you've dealt with the intro, you've got to go into the, into the facts of the, uh, of the event. So who won, by what sort of margin, is this a record, is it a successive victory, have Oxford won for the third year running, that kind of thing. And then you go into the nuts and bolts, what we would call the nuts and bolts of the story. So in terms of boat race, it would be bridge by bridge explaining the distances between the crews. It would be weather, wind, tide, the work, the strategic work of the cocks, how the stroke changes the rate. It would be great um, fielding decisions, um, positional fielding decisions by a cricket captain. It would be substitutions by Roy Hodgson, uh, you know, in a big England game. It's, these are the turning points that interest people because readers know as much about sport, if not more, than the journalists who are covering it. You talked about people having opinions, and we all have opinions, um, some more strident than others, more uh, aggressive. How do you make sure that the writing is impartial? It would be thoroughly unprofessional not to present a balanced report. A, a one-eyed sports reporter would not survive. Bear in mind that of your readers, half are going to be Manchester United fans and half are going to be Manchester City fans. You've got to be fair with both of them. You've got to present the pros and cons for both sides, whether it's Oxford or Cambridge, England or Germany, England or Australia in the Ashes series. You've got to be balanced, otherwise the readers will go and find somebody else to read. And in terms of how long it takes to write the article, how many words do you or did you normally ask people to write in terms of the, the length of the article and, and the drama? 800 words would be um, a Premier League big match report. So for an event, the same, the same would apply really for any major event, whether it's an Ashes match, whether it's a Six Nations game, whether it's the boat race, 800 words would be what, what I'd considered in enough space to tell the story, deliver all the facts, deliver the statistics which are important from the reporter's point of view, for the print reporter's point of view, he's got to be ready within five or six minutes of, of the result being declared. Okay? For the online reporter who is writing on the hoof, they have to be ready to go within seconds of, of, of an event ending. There are different ways of doing it. I mean, you picked out an article here in The Sun, but we've also got The Telegraph here as well, in terms of the different, the different headlines and the way you can grab people's attention. Here's the key to it, the intro. The intro, these 25 words are what matters most. From The Sun's perspective, headlines are all about impact, they're about fun, but they must be informative, they must try and tell the story. It's essential. No point in reading a headline that says one thing and the story says something differently. Telegraph and the broadsheets would take a more studious approach. The Sun's view was 
and, and my view during my time there was we're entertaining people who've got limited amount of time and sport is about entertainment, it's about fun, it's what we do in our leisure time and so let's give everybody a bit of fun if we can. So you're now ready for the assignment, writing a sports story and we've chosen an obvious subject, the boat race. It's the BNY Mellon Boat Race, that great tale of endurance and determination, the rivalry between those two great universities, long-standing universities, Oxford and Cambridge. And we're going to film our final piece at the scene of one of the most famous events on the British sporting calendar. <laughs>